Records on Screen, Robert's Rules of Order. A black woman with dark, short, cropped hair and eyeglasses begins to speak. Hi, everyone. My name is Tiara Simmons Marcius, and I'm doing the Robert's Rules of Order portion. Robert's Rules of Order is also known as Parliamentary Procedures, and it can be very involved, but it is so helpful. It can be both tedious and useful. So what's Robert's Rules of Order anyway? It's just a way that you conduct your meetings and maintain order. That's the simplest way to explain it. It's used in government. It's used at board of director meetings. It's used at chapter meetings if you are an organization that has different chapters. And then it makes sure that everyone who wants to have a chance to speak actually has a chance to speak. It's a way to just get through the meeting. I've included a sample agenda on the website under the Roberts Rules of Order section, and that shows you how to get from one point to another in your agenda, like or what order your meeting should take. So how is a meeting conducted? Generally, all the meetings follow a specific format, and that's where you'll see the sample agenda or the sample order of business. Robert's Rules of Order has a lot of different motions that can be made. However, there are six main motions that you're going to use at almost every single meeting. I've also included that on the website under the Robert's Rules of Order section. So what are the six main motions? Well, first you have a main motion or a new item motion. And this is when you want to introduce a new item for the agenda that was not already on the agenda. Let's say you didn't get the materials into the secretary or the chair in time, but you definitely want to talk about it at this particular meeting. So you will make a motion, a main motion. Madam Chairwoman, Chairperson, I make a new item motion and then it will proceed from there. Then you have a privileged motion. This is when there's something incredibly important or urgent to discuss. It's not related to the meeting business. It's something outside of the meeting. Um, but it's urgent and you need to talk about it right now. You will make a privileged motion. A motion to table is used to kill a motion uh, or a topic or to table a topic. Discuss it later. An incidental motion is used when there are procedural questions about other motions. So it's not business related, it's procedural. And this motion must be considered before the motion in question. So if I make a motion to postpone voting, for example, and you need clarification about the procedure about my particular motion. Because remember, I want to postpone voting and I maybe didn't do it, do the motion in its entirety. I skipped a step or I, I misworded something. Well, it's procedural. You would do an incidental motion. And before we can even consider my motion to postpone voting, we have to discuss your motion. So the six main motions are on the website and you can look at those and their explanations. Now, you're at the meeting. How do you present your motion? You can't just talk out of turn and you can't just shout out your desire to make a motion. You have to, what they call, have the floor. So in order to have the floor, in other words, it's your turn to speak, you would signal the presiding officer, whether that's the parliamentary, parliamentarian, whether it's the chairperson, whether it's the president, whoever's running the meeting, you would signal to them that you would like to speak. And you do that just by raising your hand or standing up. Simple. Okay. Now that you've been recognized, you have the floor. 
you're entitled to speak twice on each motion for about 10 minutes each. So I make a motion to table the discussion of the annual fundraiser until next meeting. And then that motion gets seconded. I second that motion. And then it goes up for a vote. Well, before you actually vote, you discuss that motion. You debate it. You have about 10 minutes each on each side so or per motion. So I have 10 minutes to discuss why I think it should not be tabled. Then you have 10 minutes to discuss why it should be tabled. And then I have another 10 minutes for a rebuttal. And then you have another 10 minutes for a rebuttal. So in actuality, you have about 20 minutes per motion to speak and present your case. Um, however, you only speak the second time on that particular motion after everyone else who wanted to speak has a chance to. So your rebuttal might not happen for another 30 minutes or so because whoever else wants to speak needs to have a chance to speak before you come back with your 10 minute rebuttal. Okay, now someone will be keeping track of time. Again, this could be the chair, it could be the presiding officer, the secretary, the parliamentarian, and they'll keep time. And when your 10 minutes is up, then they'll signal you and you have to stop speaking. However, you can request to extend your time. Um, in order to get extra time to speak, outside of your 10 minutes, then you have to have the consent of everyone else who was there, the remaining members and the chair. So even if all the other members say, sure, here's an extra five minutes, the chair can say, no, you had your 10 minutes, you presented your case, your time is up. Now, if you have extra time, because you've already spoken, you had 10 minutes, and now you've done all of your presenting and you have two minutes left on the clock. You can yield your time. I yield the floor. On the website, under Robert's Rules of Motion, I included a short outline of how uh, motions would take place during a meeting. The motion gets made, it gets seconded, restate the motion, it goes up for discussion or debate if it's debatable only, and then it goes up for a vote if it's something that gets voted on by everyone or just um, decided upon by the chair, and then the vote is announced. Robert's Rules of Order, again, it can be very involved, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes like second nature and you'll find yourself looking for it um, at every other meeting that you go to, even if it's not your board meeting. Um, again, is to make sure that everyone who wants to be heard has a chance to be heard. And that's the point of these meetings, correct? So take a look at the Robert's Rules of Order section on the website. Take a look at the supplementary materials and the additional resources that are located on the right side of the screen, and then put it into action. Words on screen, Robert's Rules Cheat Sheet. This is a Robert's Rules of Order Cheat Sheet. It's very handy to have around and even hand out to your membership when there is a meeting and to make sure everyone knows what's going on in the room. There are a lot of motions on this cheat sheet, so I'm only gonna go over a few and uh, how it would go about. In the first column, you see two. That's the name of the motion that you're presenting. In the second column, it says, you say. And in that column, it shows you how you would actually present that motion, what words you would use. In the third column, it tells you whether or not you can interrupt the speaker, the person speaking before you. In the fourth column, it tells you whether or not someone needs to second it. It says second needed. The fifth column tells you whether or not that particular motion is debatable. The sixth column is amendable. 
whether or not that motion or what's being presented can be amended. And finally, in the seventh column, it tells you whether a vote is needed and how many people need to vote in order for that motion to pass. Okay, so one that happens in every single meeting, and this is why it's the first one there, is adjourn. After the meeting is over, you wouldn't say, thank you for coming, you can go home now. You first have to actually close the meeting. So you would adjourn and you would say, I move that we adjourn. You cannot interrupt the speaker if someone is already speaking and you do need someone to second it or agree with you. It is not debatable and it is not amendable. There's nothing to amend. And in order to pass, you need a majority vote. A majority vote is your quorum and it's usually 50% plus one. 50% of the membership that's present plus one in order for it to pass. So how would that sound? So the meeting is over and usually the chair or the secretary would say, I move that we adjourn. Of course, this is after everyone has finished speaking. Then someone else would say, I second that motion. Then the chair or the parliamentarian would, say, would go for a vote and they would say, all those in favor, if you agree to close the meeting, you say yes or I or raise your hand, whatever procedure your organization has come up with. The votes are counted or the voice votes are heard and the motion will pass or not pass. Another important motion is the point of privilege. This motion is used if you need to complain about something, as it says in the first column, or you have to interrupt because something urgent has come up and you need to speak. So, yes, you can interrupt the person who's already speaking if someone is speaking. And no, it does not need to be seconded because it's urgent. It is not debatable and it is not amendable. And unlike the moving to adjourn, the chair decides whether or not this motion is going to pass. So the person is speaking and you want to, let's use the example that's here on the page, complain about the noise. It's noisy in the room. You can't hear what's going on. So you say point of privilege and you interrupt the person who's already speaking and you would tell them what the complaint is. At that point, the chair will decide uh, what to do about it. Okay, another one is called tabling. Here you will see that it's, tabling is to suspend further consideration of something. You want to put it on hold. You want to talk about it later. So you would say, I move that we table it or whatever discussion is happening. You cannot interrupt the speaker and you do need a second. It is not debatable and it is not amendable and you need a majority vote, 50% plus one. And then if that motion passes, then it gets put on the table for another meeting or just later in that meeting. So with that, let me skip down to taking something off of the table. So it's later or it's the next meeting and you want a particular item to be brought back up. So you would move to take something off of the table. You say, I move we take from the table this discussion that we were having earlier or at another meeting. You can interrupt the person speaking if someone is speaking. You do need a second. I second that motion. It is not debatable and it is not amendable. And you need a majority vote, 50% plus one. This chart is about five pages long 
and it also gives you the procedure for handling a main motion. A main motion, remember, is uh, to put something forward in front of the group. It's to add an item. It walks you through how that happens. Here's an important note, because meetings can get pretty contentious. When you're debating a motion, especially if it's something that you're pretty passionate about and you really want to be heard or you don't want to hear what someone else has to say, there, there is decorum to be had. You want to listen to what the other side has to say. You want to focus on the issues and not personalities. And this is important because during these meetings, sometimes whether or not you want to listen might depend on whether or not you like the person. You want to avoid questioning the motives of whatever is being presented. Just hear what's being said and focus on that. And as always, you want to be polite. The third page tells you how to accomplish what you want to do in meetings. Your main motion, remember putting an item forward, amending your motion. If you want to change the wording of something that was being discussed, you would say madam, chairperson, or president, or whoever is leading that, um, that meeting. I move that the motion be amended by adding or striking out all or the following words. And then you would say what it is you want to amend. Sometimes this can be both. You want to strike some words, but then add other words. Um, it could just be changing the way something sounds or is worded itself without really changing the meaning. You want to limit the debates. Uh, and I'll go over that in a moment. Limiting debates because... Time is usually always of the essence, and a lot of meetings have a time limit. You don't want to be in a meeting for three hours talking about one particular motion or one particular item. So you would limit the time for the debate, and a lot of times it's about 10 minutes per side. Here's adjournment again. After you get recognized, you would say, I move to adjourn. And finally, here's some more point of order, point of parliamentary inquiry. That means, for example, you might be confused about something, about how the meeting is run, is going according to Robert's rules or parliamentary procedures, but you're confused about something. So you'd ask, this is really just asking for clarification. 